Hi guys, this is Raju Rahman from Tectonic. So I've been using Nest cameras for a while now and I've tried alternatives from companies like E. But to be honest, I always end up going back to Nest for a variety of reasons. Recently, IMOU contacted me and asked me if I could review their weatherproof outdoor security camera called The Look. Taking into consideration its low price, extensive features and the fact that I need a camera for the garden, I thought I should give it a test to see whether or not it's any good. So keep watching to find out more. Firstly, let's see what you get in the box. Sliding off the cover, first thing you'll see is the camera itself, regulatory information, installation position map, and the quick start guide. You'll also find a white box. Inside of that, you'll find the bracket you'll be using to mount the camera to the wall. You can see four screw holes here. This is why you'll need the installation position map so you can drill holes in the correct positions on the wall. I won't be needing it myself as I'll be screwing the bracket directly onto my garden door's wooden frame. You've got the 3 pin UK power adapter, a screw package containing 15 screws and 15 anchors of different sizes. Finally, 9 cable clips and 1 pry bar so you can access the SD card slot, the reset and WPS buttons. So the camera itself looks well designed, although it does sort of look like a face with the lens on the left, the PIR detector on the right and the spotlight just below that. You'll find the speaker grill at the bottom. Around the back of the camera, you'll see the socket for the standard thread mount. The camera itself is powered via the captive 3 meter long USB cable. The downside to that is having to drill a hole big enough for the end of the USB cable to go through. Unless of course you know how to cut and splice a USB cable, which I clearly don't. So briefly, in terms of the main specifications, the look is IP65 waterproof rated, which makes sense considering it's designed to be used outdoors. It's got a 1080p camera that has a 111 degrees field of view, so slightly less than 130 degrees you would get with a Nest outdoor camera. The rest of the specs are on the screen, so please feel free to pause the video if you want to check them out. Setting up the device was straightforward. You download the IMOU app on your phone. You'll need to sign up using your email address, scan the QR code attached to the USB cable, connect to your wireless network, bearing in mind that it won't connect to a five gigahertz frequency band. So you have to connect to a 2.4 gigahertz band and then follow the remaining instructions and you're pretty much done. In terms of key features, as with most security cameras, you're able to remotely view your camera using the app. As you can see, the app is surprisingly quick to launch and you can start your camera feed pretty quickly too. It's not much slower than the Nest app on the left. Upon launching the app, you're shown all your cameras. However, unlike Nest, it doesn't show you a live feed until you select the camera itself. Once you're in the live feed, you can take a picture have a two-way conversation, record a video clip, manually set off the siren, and manually turn on and off the spotlight, which can of course adjust the brightness off via the settings. Another feature of the look are push notifications. When the camera notices movement, it will notify you through your phone or whichever device you have the IMOU app installed on. So from the initial movement being detected, you'll see that it takes about three to four seconds for you to be notified, which in my opinion is plenty fast. Clicking on the notification should take you straight to the incident clip, at which point you can download the video and share it, or you can just watch the video clip straight away. So the footage you're watching now, it was downloaded via the camera itself. Um, and of course the audio that you're listening to, it was recorded via the camera as well. Um, so both the footage and the audio you're looking and listening to now is from the Luke camera. Um, of course, most cameras are expected to do pretty good when uh, you know there's lots of light around. It might not be the brightest of days, but there's plenty of light, so you'd expect the camera will do pretty decent um, but in terms of how it works at night um, I guess with the magic of video editing it's now after sunset and as dark as it gets and this is what the footage looks like with night vision on 
So what I'll do is I'll turn on the spotlight and we'll see what the video looks like with that one. Just have to give it a few seconds for the night vision to turn off. And there you go. So you can see now it's no longer black and white and uh, everything's been lit up. So it's not super bright, um, but it's more than bright enough to cover the whole garden. Another great thing that definitely needs to be mentioned is how well this camera filters false alarms. For instance, when it's a fair bit windy and the gazebo's curtains move around, I don't get push notifications. That would have driven me mad had it been the case. However, most of the notifications I do get have been for my neighbor's cat. You might want to play back video from a particular point in time, that's another key feature of this device. It's not anything to brag about as most smart cameras allow you to do this, however as mentioned earlier on in this review, this camera has a micro SD card slot and that's something you should definitely be excited about. This means unlike Nest you're not forced to pay for cloud storage if you want to play back historical footage. I'm using a 32GB micro SD card which holds about 4 days of footage. Obviously if you want more you'll need a bigger card just bear in mind that it supports a max 128GB. Of course if you want to get cloud storage you have the option of 3 days, 7 days and 30 days of cloud storage. However unlike using the micro SD card which records continuous footage, IMOU's cloud service only holds event based footage and if you download video from the cloud you get standard resolution video instead of the 1080p you would get from the micro SD card. So that's another disadvantage to their cloud storage solution. Personally I would just stick to using micro SD. Another thing you'll notice is the event based history doesn't show you a snapshot or thumbnail of the event so you won't know at a glance what triggered the event, you'll have to actually go and watch it back to find out. It's not a deal breaker but would have been useful to have. Another feature of this camera is what IMOU calls active deterrence. It's got a security siren and that built in spotlight demonstrated earlier on. Both the siren and spotlight are activated if the motion sensor notices any movement. I don't think the siren itself is loud enough to shock any would-be intruders but at 110 decibels it's certainly enough to annoy the neighbours especially if it goes off during the night when everything else is quiet. If you don't like the siren you also have the ability to pre-record your own message and have that play instead and of course you can completely disable the siren and the alarm if you wanted to. Lots of cameras out there claim to be smart when they don't have any IoT integration and on that I was pleasantly surprised the look supports If This Then That, Alexa and Google Home. It was pretty easy to add the camera onto my Google Home app and it essentially treats it as three different devices so now I can control the spotlight and siren directly from my Google Home app or using my voice. One thing to note is that unlike my Nest camera which shows the video feed straight from the Google Home app, the IMOU camera stream won't. So what's the point of adding the camera to Google Home I hear you ask? Well, you can still view the stream from either the Nest Hub or any Chromecast enabled TV. Show me the garden. Okay, streaming garden on living room display. So to end this video I'll summarise what I don't like and what I do like about this camera. The only thing I didn't like about this camera is the USB type A connector. Because the end is so big you'll have to drill a pretty big hole through your wall. Not everyone is capable of splicing a USB cable so on that basis if you can't put in a smaller connector like a micro USB or USB C then at least make sure it doesn't have a captive cable. Now going on to what I do like pretty much everything else. It costs about half the price of Nest cameras. At the time of publishing this video it goes for £69.99 but keep an eye out for Black Friday offers, it could go for less. The video quality is on par with more expensive cameras if not better. It has a built in spotlight and micro SD support so you don't need to sign up for cloud storage if you don't want to and of course the fact that you can control it using your voice and stream the footage on your Chromecast is just icing on the cake. I definitely recommend this camera. If you're interested I've placed links to the Amazon product page in the description below and you'll also find some voucher codes in the description including ones that will give you a few quid off. Let me know what you guys think of the camera in the comments section below. 
This has been Raju Rahman from Tectonic. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you, please subscribe and like. That would really help me out. And don't forget to check out these other videos too.